It is August 23rd, and that puts us on page 81, which is lesson number 12. What is the title of this morning's lesson? It's a lot happier lesson than last week. What did, uh, what did we cover last week? Hell. The punishment of hell. Brother Wiley did a very good lesson. We very, covered it very well. We covered that one, and before that was the judgment. So, so these are the last two lessons in this quarter study. The quarter study again is and was what this we recognize. <clears throat> so, we recognize as Christians and as believers in the Word of God that there will be what we covered last week a judgment for what we have done in the flesh, whether that be good or bad, or good and bad, I should say. Uh, And for those who in this life have fallen short and have not believed in and put on Christ, so his grace can cover the multitude of sins, so he can intercede for them on that day of judgment, then they will have to face the punishment of hell. I said this last week's lesson. Um, Our... God, that is the God, is a judge, just and righteous God. I have three sets of verses quickly. Would somebody turn to Psalm 145, verse 17? Psalm 145, 17, someone else? Deuteronomy 32, and verse 4. I'll do John 17, 17. Does somebody have Psalm 145, verse 17? Okay. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Thank you. That was Psalm 145, 17. Does someone have Deuteronomy 32, verse 4? He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judged. A God of truth and without iniquity. Thank you. So, there's plenty of other verses like that. In other words, God is true to what? True to what He says. He's true to His Word. John 17, 17, Sanctify them by your truth. Your Word is truth. It's one of those things... It comes to mind. Corbin is now four and a half. And Heather and I are constantly like, why don't you believe me? Why don't you why don't you just believe the things I say? These things are truth. This is what is going to happen. <clears throat> so we're still talking about hell versus heaven. God is true to his word to provide punishment of hell. That is torment and an absence of God. So I know I've spoken about this before. I was watching a show. It was Ancient Aliens or one of those crazy shows. And there was a guy talking. He said, all hell is is being is the absence of God. That's all hell is. Is that not enough? Is that not enough? Thank you. What, uh, it's been said, what? If, if we miss heaven, we miss what? You miss it all. You miss everything. So everybody thinks of the torment part. That's normally where your mind goes to, but and I suppose it's the absence of God is part of that torment, but it's the absence of God is awful. So, just uh, like you said, as if the torment isn't awful enough. Um, the torment's like the stuff of uh, little kids' nightmares, ghoulish Hollywood films that comes to mind, you know. That's what you think of when you think of torment. But, however, much, much worse than that is what hell is going to be like. Um, just thinking of anything on TV, it makes it sound trivial. Uh, hell and the torments in hell are no joke. They're no laughing matter or a thing to be mocked. Uh, but what has to be the worst part, the absolute worst part, is the absence of God. In the absence of God you're in the absence or you're away from all joy, all peace, all love, and all 
light forever and ever. That's tomorrow, the next day, and then some more. I mean, I, I still can't make my mind understand forever. But that's what hell is. So, um, it's like, for me, that's a horror, or a foreboding, nameless fear, anguish, anxiety. Our total help, helplessness awaits in the punishment of hell. So why are we talking about that? We're talking about heaven this morning. Um, I kind of have to make a comparative for my mind. Uh, conversely, when we think of heaven and we read, more importantly, when we read in the Bible of heaven or glory or paradise, the exact opposite is true. Correct? So... It's t talked about as a place of no torment, no pain, no tears. It is a place where we will be in the very presence of light, of life, joy, peace, truth, comfort. We're going to be in the very presence of God the Creator. So what is heaven then, if not the very home of God? Uh, page... 81, um, our study this morning, as we said, happily, is the reward of heaven. There are four sets of verses this morning, uh, John 14 and 2 Corinthians 5, that section is entitled, A Prepared Place. 1 Peter chapter 1 is a reserved place, and Revelation 22, a place that is described. Um, part of our introduction on page 82, starting at that last full paragraph. Given the statements in Scripture about heaven, it follows that we should want to go to this prepared place when we leave the earth. But if such is to be the case, provisions must be made. We must trust God and His wonderful plan for our salvation. This involves submitting ourselves completely <coughs> To his will, Matthew 7, 21. Like Abraham, who in faith left his home when directed by God, we must be willing to leave the world and its allurements behind. We must desire to please God and to be with him more than we want to please ourselves. Consequently, we must, with all others who belong to Christ, crucify, quote, the flesh with its passions and desires. That's Galatians 5, 24. Paul did this when he obeyed the gospel. We must do no less. So, does anybody have anything before we get to the first set of verses this morning on uh, John 14? All right, John 14. Who penned the book of John? John. John. <clears throat> John was the brother of who? The other apostle? James. James. They were both. I'm trying to do this thing and you're jumping through the questions. Yes, so he, James and John were so-called the sons of thunder and their father was Zebedee. So... John 14, we're going to do, uh, cover verses 1 through 6. This is a prepared place. Um, and who is speaking here in John 14? Jesus. Jesus Christ, yes. Would someone read uh, John 14, verses uh, 1 through 6, please? Thank you. As Christians and believers and readers of the Bible, we know these verses very well, do we not? 
let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. What what is what did he just say? Mm-hmm. Yes. And not only that, the first part, you believe in God, that's a given. So maybe and he, and who's he speaking to here? His disciples. Yeah, his what, apostles. Exactly. What was about to happen shortly? His crucifixion. Right his after life. this. So he's still teaching the apostles, even after all this time that he's been with them, and he and he's about to go through his trials, crucifixion, and everything. So He's still teaching them. But it's a given that you believe in God. So what's that mean? It's a given that God is real. You believe in God because God is real. Believe also in me. Uh, yes, sir. Also, you know, Bob still, some of the apostles that realized at that time, but they still would like to look through them. They believed in God, but they really didn't fully believe he was the one that the Savior. You know, he had to keep reminding them that yeah. through God, you had to obey me. Now, I'm the go between. And in the and in the way it was supposed to happen, they were ready for for him to establish his kingdom. I mean, a lot of times they wanted at least to see a show of power. You know, I mean, they wanted that kind of stuff. There, it was once again. It was y'all are missing the point. You're missing the way that this is to be done, yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, continuing that thought, verse two: In my Father's house are many mansions. He didn't say if my father's house is real, if this, if since my father, that's a, once again, that's a given. In my father's house are many mansions. Um, Mansions actually literally translates to dwellings. Uh, If it were not so, I would have told you. Again, heaven is real and that is reaffirmed here by Jesus I go to prepare a a place for you. So, if he's going to prepare a place, then that must mean we are able to get there, right? So, our our study guide brings that out. Salvation is real. Therefore, if if he's going to prepare a place, then there's got to be a way to get there. And and God made provisions for that. So, Jesus. Verse 3, if I go, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Jesus' return is real and is guaranteed. That where I am, there you may be also. So that's the reason he's going to return. <coughs> so you can be joined with him. We can be joined with him in paradise. What did we say? You know, that hell is. The absence of God, you know, it's like, oh, that's all it is. That's a lot more than that. That's the whole point. So we can be with God. <clears throat> and where I go, you know, and the way, you know. The way. In verse 5, Thomas, who was called what? A lot of people call him that. I always had to question, why? How come? I had to, had to know the next part. Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So verse 4, where I go you know and the way you know. Um, that means we know it and it can be known. So again, how is that? through the dispensation of the Word. Do we have the Word of God? Today. Yes, sir. Shape now. Yes, sir. Brother Colin, again, there are sometimes, you know, preacher, teacher be teaching something which Jesus was right here. Mm-hmm. You have people with you that have been with you a long time. Might be one or two of them feet up, don't oh, really? quite understand, but they won't say nothing, but Colin did. Yeah, he did. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I ain't going to say that. You know, it's somebody else will say it. Come out. But, you know, if you don't understand it, 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 it's nothing wrong with you saying you don't understand or don't know. 
Yeah, not at all. And I've, a lot of, well, everybody says Doubting Thomas, but I mean, a lot of people have a, a bad, a stigma or whatever in their mind about that, but but that's, just like you said, it's not bad to, to want to know why, and he, he was able to ask it of Jesus. Um, so we do have the Word. We have the Bible. We have the Word in its entirety. We can know the way to where Jesus is. How is it that we can know the way? What is the way? The Word. The Word. The Word, the way, Jesus it's all one. If we have the word and we can know the word, then we can know the way. <clears throat> so that is, if we know and follow the word. Believing comes by what? And hearing comes by? The word of God. Yes. Second Corinthians 5. It just did verse 1, but we're going to do a little bit further. Uh, 2 Corinthians penned by Paul around A.D. 55, 56, or 7, or somewhere in there. So 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 11. This continues our thought on a prepared place. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we... In this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our, habit, with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to Him. Verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. First one, for we know that if our earthly house this tent is destroyed. What earthly house? What tent? What? That's easy. Some people can still manage to get it confused, but yes. This earthly house, this tent, that's our body. If it's destroyed, we have what? A house, yes, a house not made with hands. Another building from God. A place that has been repaired. Where is that? Heaven. In heaven, yes. And how do we know it's there? Because he says it is. Ought to be good enough. Yes, because Jesus went to prepare it. For in this, that means in this body, in this life, we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. That means we long for the next life. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Verse 4, for we, for we who are in this tent, that's again this body, groan, <laughs> being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but rather, but further clothed, that mortality, that means death, may be swallowed up by life. Any questions, anything on that? I asked Heather this morning. She had to beat me to wake me up. Put coffee under my face. I've heard a lot of patients say, I'm tired, I just want to go home. 
and yeah. basically get tired. Yeah. You want to go to that that initial home. Yeah. You have to really reach an age over where you are to respect the state. Yeah. Well, I mean, so what yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. So he's we're supposed to look forward to that. I I can't tell you right now. I'm I'm looking forward to dying like in three seconds. I can't I can't tell you that, but we, that's what we're to be working for because no matter how good anything could be here, how much better is it going to be? It gets sweeter. <laughs> that's the reward. It's exactly. That's what we're looking forward to. That's the reward. <clears throat> um, and building on that point, when we get to the next life, there will be no what? Tears. No tears, no pain, no sorrow, no... Yeah, well... Yes. Uh, skip down to verse 6 again. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in this, in this body, we are absent from the Lord. And this is what? Physical. Physical. Because the Lord is spiritual and we are physical. Um, why, so, why can't uh, we be with the Lord in this body? <coughs> yes, it is. And heaven is designed to be spiritual, so we can't go there and just like Not physical. That's what Jesus' whole ministry was about. And a lot of times, even the apostles would ask questions. They're like, well, which one of us is going to be the greatest? Which one? They were still missing the point. Um, this flesh is sinful, weak, physical. Can God abide sin? Can He stand it? Can He be in the presence of it? That's why there's going to be a great gulf in, but uh, a span in between heaven and hell is that you cannot go across. Yes, sir. Yeah, very good point. Yes. No sin can enter heaven. So we have to die to this spiritually and eventually physically too. Um, verse 8, we are confident, yes, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Confident means we know that this is the case and well pleased means we're going to be happy when it happens. Just like you were talking about, we're going to be happy when this happens. So we are to look forward to the to the death of this world and this life because we know what's to come is so much greater. So on that point, Jesus has gone and prepared a place for us. It's real, and as Christians, we can't wait to get there. Next section is uh, entitled "A Place Reserved." That's. Uh, First Peter one. Um, first Peter penned by Peter around AD sixty two to sixty four. A place reserved for who then? For Christians, easy answer. For yes, for those who <coughs> obey and follow Christ. Would someone read first Peter one verses uh, three through nine? Actually, Of your 
Thank you. <clears throat> I just couldn't do two verses because that's actually like, what, six verses, but it's only two sentences. <laughs> hard to break up some of his thoughts like that. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again again, so begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance. What's an inheritance? Exactly. That's that's the biggest point of it. In in this life, when we think of inheritance, we think of something from what? From your your parents, your grandparents, relatives, stuff like that, right? Um, but did that's the question that you that you answered already? Does one usually have to work for an inheritance? Usually not, but usually there are sometimes strings attached. exactly. There's sometimes strings attached, attached, or you have to meet what certain criteria. You have to do this and do this and do. This. You hear some some of these in worldly senses are, are crazy that you hear, <laughs> but uh, once you meet this age, once you have done this, I've heard of a lot of them. You, Kids don't get the money until they graduate college or something like that. You know. So, to get the inheritance, do as Christians, are there? I don't like that term, strings attached, when it comes to that. But are there certain criteria? There are. Yes, it is uh, no different for our incorruptible inheritance, which is a wonderful <coughs> thought. Anything in this life that we get, it's like. Like, yay, now you got more stuff. And have you heard people? That was on a movie I was watching the other day. A guy was inheriting something and he was complaining about it. Because now I've got to pay taxes on it. And now I have to worry about this. And now I've got to do this. And now I've got to do that. So he's complaining about it. This is a true blessing in every sense. And it's incorruptible. <clears throat> Yes. It's all up to the one who is to inherit it. it. It doesn't work that way, does it? You don't get to go to the person who's, who's, who's offering whatever to you and say, well, I'll take it, but you have to do this and this and this for me. What normally happens <coughs> when someone does that, I'll accept this gift, but you have to do this. Usually the hands either come back or, you know, I don't know. Incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. What does it mean, reserved? What does it mean to reserve something? Yes. It's held, it's kept, it's readied, it's prepared. It's something that you can know, that you can know, that you know will be there for you. Yes. You know, as human beings, we always say things like, well, what I wouldn't do for me is all. <laughs> what I wouldn't do for this, what I wouldn't do for that. You know, what won't you do for yourself? Yeah, for, what won't you do for everything? Yeah, for some, a million dollars is never, it's not going to matter. You can't take it with you. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do anybody any good once you're gone. I mean, yeah. or, you know, make somebody happy with that. <laughs> and then I gotta pay taxes on. It. Yeah, but I mean, what, what, what would you give for yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, most folks won't do something as simple as just one of the one come back up. You know, mm -hmm. you gotta do that. There, you gotta do that. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. There are criteria. Yes, thank you, brother. <laughs> Uh, verse 6, quickly, in this case, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, <clears throat> if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. I got to thinking about that. We have, in, like in America right now, we have what are called what, first world problems. 
you know, where you're, you're mad that your coffee got to this or this is on the news. And, but I mean, we don't really have any awful problems just yet. Um, you have been grieved by various trials. What kind of various trials did the early church go through? Persecution. And more? Yeah. We're not talking about they got made fun of on Facebook, which happens to me often until these people defriend me. I, look, I've had acquaintances that I've known forever, 12, 15 years, and come out and mock me, and then they defriend me and say mean things. We're, you know, and that, oh, that hurt my feelings. We're not talking about that. These people were killed. They were killed. So that's what it meant by various trials. <clears throat> that the genuineness of your faith, faith being much more precious than gold that perishes. It's like you're talking about, this is gold. I've got gold. It still perishes. It tarnishes, though it is tested by fire. It's not a nice thought. What happens when you test something by fire? What happens when you test gold by fire? Yes. But you still had to go through the fire to get there, didn't you? The fire wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy that. It was hot. Or you're going to burn it off. So what, we're talking about both of those things. You, what is burned off is what you did not want. Correct? That is the unpure. That is what could not stand the test. And you, what you have left might be a remnant of what you had before. You might have had a larger volume, but now what you have is so much better. So that's what's happening to them. Uh, tested by fire that may be, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith. What? At the very, very end of verse 9, what do you receive for all of this? Salvation. Everything. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That's the ultimate reward. So that's what a place in a place reserved is for a Christian. It's readied for us and it is there waiting for us. In the last two seconds we have a uh, Revelation twenty two five, uh, a place described. I also like to read uh, Colossians three. So let me read Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears then you also will appear with him in glory. So where's Christ? In heaven. Revelation 22, 1 through 5, quickly. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Water cleanses and gives life. Water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its streets... It what? Where? It where? Heaven. In the middle of Heaven Street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The, uh, our study guide brought it out. It was pretty interesting. So, Revelation is starting to end with the tree of life, and in Genesis started with what? The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Verse 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Verse 4, They shall see his face. Back to what we were talking about earlier. What happens now if 
well, it's mostly Old Testament examples, but what would happen if we were in this body in the presence of God? Poof. <laughs> Poof. You're gone. <clears throat> they shall see his face. They're already going to be changed. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. Uh, there shall be no night there. No night. No darkness. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. There's not going to be a sun, there's not going to be a light bulb, there's not going to be anything. Where does it all come from? Where does all light, all illumination and goodness come from? Jesus, God. That's all we'll need, and that's all we're seeking for. 